it's always nice when the clinical history gives you a diagnosis and the histology matches perfectly. So the histology becomes a spot diagnosis. Uh, this is a, another case that uh, Antonina very kindly shared with me. Antonina from uh, CST Healthcare in Kiev in U Ukraine. Um, now, I don't have the actual clinical history for this particular example, but we can we can, um, we can probably suppose that the patient developed painful nodules on the distal extremities. And um, we could go on further and say that it probably happened um, during the winter time. So with that in mind, uh, the diagnosis is really very straightforward. Uh, at low power examination, one can see there's massive, absolutely massive uh, edema of the superficial papillary dermis. Uh, and we'll just look at this other cut um, just to see it in the right orientation. And it shows the same thing. And uh, in addition to the edema, one can see there's a very heavy inflammatory cell infiltrate uh, which I think will turn out to be mostly lymphocytes, and they're surrounding the vessels in, in an almost coat sleeve fashion, extending along the, the uh, vessels all the way from the papillary dermis right down into the deep reticular dermis. Now, uh, with that histology in mind, and with the uh, clinical information, one is obviously drawn to a diagnosis of perniosis. It would be hard for it to be anything else, really. However, one has to have a little bit of thought about it. Um, we'll just look at it more closely. And um, in this cut, we can see the edema. We can see the coats sleeving infiltrate following the, the vessels and um, what we, an additional feature it's not very well seen in this case but it's something you see in perniosis quite often is uh, the infiltrate extends right down to the to the sweat coil and often follows the acrosyringeum and if I move it up a little bit more you see, there, there's a bit of a sweat duct there. And uh, here, here we have a yeah, crying sweat gland. And you can see lymphocytes um, uh, infiltrating in and around it. So we'll go back up and have a look further. And you can make out, I think, that the infiltrate's pretty monotonous. It's really just... Um, lymphocytes with perhaps the uh, an occasional histiocyte. Now, when you look at a case of what you think of perniosis, it think is perniosis. You have to um, you have to find out whether this is so-called idiopathic perniosis, in which the cause is completely unknown. Um, or whether it's perniosis developing in a patient with a connective tissue disease, particularly systemic lupus erythematosus. Um, and uh, I'll come back to that in a moment. Just to remind you, perniosis is a, it's a quite a common condition and it develops particularly in rather damp, wet climates where it gets very cold in winter and patients develop painful plaques and nodules on their fingers and toes. And if you live in very cold parts of the world, you may get involvement of the ears and the, the tip of the nose. And um, Histolo the histology of perniosis is, uh, is exactly, sorry, I have to try and get these images back again, is exactly what we're seeing down here. The only, the, the, 
the only histological differential diagnosis, I suppose, if you didn't have any clinical information, would be polymorphous light eruption, because that can give you a very heavy uh, uh, subepidermal edema. But then the clinical history would be of a very variably presenting uh, dermatosis uh, in a photo disc distribution, which of course is not what we see in perniosis. Now I, th I just wanted to have a look along the dermo-epidermal junction at the basement membrane region because we need to have a squint at that just to see. Um, well the other thing we could look for, sometimes in perniosis you can actually get vasculitis, a sort of a lymphocytic vasculitis which is always a rather difficult concept that people are not, not too keen on. I only really use that term if I can see that the vessel wall is really infiltrated with lymphocytes and that there's some fibrin de deposition. Otherwise one could use that term for all sorts of things and it would be rather meaningless. But it doesn't really matter too much. You, you can see there's some red cell extravasation so there's obviously some some vascular permeability. Now we need to get away from the blister bit or from the edema bit to see what's happening at the basement membrane region. And in this field, gosh, it would be very hard to say whether there is any interface change there or not. Um, you might wonder coming across here whether there might be some interface change, I suppose. Um, but it's rather difficult. Let's look at the other piece now. That was that one. Let's have a look at this one and see if we get anything better. Uh, if there's any doubt, you can always do a lupus band test, which will be positive in, in uh, lupus. And uh, you may also have some clinical information that might indicate to you that uh, the patient does indeed have a background of lupus. I'm always a bit careful on that subject because you don't want to panic the panic a person who's just got regular perniosis into thinking they've got a connective tissue disease. On the other hand, you don't want to miss it either. So I I I, I think when you write a report on this sort of case, it's probably best to say, in this example at least, this is probably idiopathic perniosis, but make the point that um, you can't totally exclude the possibility of a, an associated connective tissue disease, and that leaves it up to the clinician to, um, to uh, sort out the issue. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else, uh, if we could see any convincing vasculitis. I uh, I didn't see it earlier when I first looked at this case, and I I don't think we're picking it up. Some people say that periecrine uh, infiltration is diagnostic almost of perniosis. I um I don't think I've seen enough perniosis cases. Trouble is, I spent most of my life looking at melanocytic lesions rather than anything else, and so. Perhaps those who have seen perniosis till it's coming out of the back of their head uh, may well be able to, to comment on that. Anyway, this is a classical case of perniosis, and I hope it's been of some interest to you. Thank you very much for your attention.